welcome back to Crick with Cleo. As you all know, the guardian of cricket's law and spirit, the Malibun Cricket Club, also known as MCC, has made few changes to the rules of the game. From not allowing saliva to shine the ball to allowing one card method of dismissing the batsman, the new code of law of 2020-22 will be followed by players from 1st of October 2022 in international cricket. The club has made nine changes to the laws of the game, out of which three of them will be used in this year IPL season. So come on, let's have a look at those new laws introduced by the MCC. So the first law is Law 1.3, Replacement of a Player. The replacements are to be treated as if they were the player they replaced on the field. They will receive the penalties or dismissals that the player has done in that match. Quite confusing, right? Well, let me explain you. Earlier, the replaced player was considered as a new player who wasn't connected with any kind of actions of the player he or she has replaced. But now, if a player takes a wicket before getting replaced, the dismissal will be added into the account of the new player coming in at his or her place. Let me give you another example. When player A has been replaced by player B in the ongoing match, player A will not just be substituted but will also be completely replaced by player B. Which means whatever warnings, whatever suspensions or whatever penalties that the player A has got before being replaced, the same will be carried on to player B also. Wow, that's such a horrific rule. Surely no one would want to be in that situation. Well, let's move on to the next law. Law 18.11 Batters returning when caught When a batter gets caught, the new batter will start at the striker's end even if the batters had crossed before the catch was taken. Well, this rule will be used in this year IPL season. Earlier, the striker and non-striker would run for a run when the ball is in the air and if they would manage to cross before the ball has been caught, then the new batter would be on the non-striker's end. But this won't happen, the new rule won't let this happen anymore. The new batter will take the strike unless it's the last ball of the over. This change was first seen in the tournament called the 100 which was held in England and this law is specially designed to reward the bowlers to get wickets. Law 20.4.2.12 Dead Ball the new law will allow the umpire to call it a dead ball when either side is disadvantaged by a person, animal or other object within the field of play. Earlier, it was considered as a legal delivery when a run or boundary or a wicket was taken just before the interference. But now, according to the new law, the ball will be called as a dead ball. Law 21.4 Baller throwing towards striker's end before delivery. If a baller throws the ball in an attempt to run out the striker before entering the delivery stride, then it will be called as a dead ball. Till now, it was called as a no ball. Obviously, it's a very rare situation and am I the only one who never knew about this rule? Law 22.1 Judging a wide Law 22.1 has been amended to take away the unfair advantage from the batters. A wide will apply to where the batter is standing, where the striker has stood at any point since the bowler began the run-up and which would also have passed wide of the striker in a normal batting position. So we all know how the batsmen nowadays change their stance and position from here to there to distract the rhythm of the baller, especially in T20 format. Earlier, despite the sudden change in stance and position from the batter, the wide deliveries were given on the basis of where the batter ended up. But now, the umpire will note where the batter is standing in the crease at the point when the baller starts his or her run up. Well, with this rule coming in, it's really going to be interesting to see what will be umpire's call when the batter tries to play reverse sweep, reverse scoop or reverse pull by changing their stance at the last moment. So let's move on to the next law, law 25.8, striker's right to play the ball. 
The new law will allow the batter to hit the ball if it lands away from the pitch, making sure that some part of their bat or person remains within the pitch. Should they venture beyond that, the umpire will call it a dead ball. As a reward to the batter, any ball which would force them to leave the pitch will also be called a no ball. Now I hope you remember David Warner's shot to Mohammad Hafiz in T20 World Cup 2021 which went for a six. The ball had slipped from baller's hand and went to the batter bouncing twice. Now the batter cannot take the risk of leaving the pitch and play a shot like that. But if he's if the batter is willing to strike the ball then he or she has to make sure that some part of the bat or uh, the person remains in the pitch and if the delivery forces the batsman to leave the pitch and play the shot then it will be called as a no ball laws 27.4 and 28.6 unfair movement by the fielding side once the field is set the fielders are not supposed to move from his or her position once the bowler starts the run up if there is any kind of movement from the fielding side then the batting team gets five penalty runs earlier umpires used to signal it as a dead ball but now not anymore the fielders have to be really careful here law 38.3 moving the running out of the non-striker the act of running out batter at the non-striker's end by the bowler while running up, often called as mankading, has been moved from law 41 unfair play to law 38 run out. Well, this law is quite simple to understand. Who can forget the incident which took place in 2019 IPL where Ashwin Mankar and Joss Butler. There was huge controversy about this as some called the act not in the spirit of the game. Putting an end to the so-called unfair play, the MCC has decided to officially call it as a run out and will be no more called as an unfair game. And this rule will be added in this year IPL season. Law 41.3 no saliva. This law will not permit the use of saliva on the ball, which also removes any grey areas of fielders eating sugary sweets to alter their saliva to apply to the ball. Using saliva will be treated the same way as any other unfair methods of changing the condition of the ball. Shining the ball is an important role from the baller's point of view, but using saliva to shine the ball is strictly prohibited now. This decision also eliminates the chances of players chewing gum to thicken their saliva so that they can apply it on the ball. However, they can use their sweat to shine the ball and moreover, this rule will be included in this year IPL season. Well, these are the 9 laws introduced by MCC which will come into force from 1st October 2022 in international cricket. So what are your thoughts on these new laws introduced by MCC? Well, for me, I think the laws are quite sensible. The man card is now fair. The wide, the wide rule, the wide rule seems good in in this era of attacking batters. So it's really going to be interesting to see how these rules work in the coming cricket days. I really hope you uh, found this video informative. If you did, then do click the like button and also share it with your friends. And if you didn't subscribe my channel, do subscribe my channel. And yeah, see you in my next video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.